Okay, welcome everyone. I'm partnering with Get Covered Illinois to connect constituents with answers about really important state health insurance, uh, plan options and other coverage questions. Open enrollment for the state's Affordable Care Act marketplace is happening right now through the 15th of December. No matter your medical history or condition, health insurance coverage is a necessity. If you don't have insurance through your uh, employer, which often right now during COVID, a lot of people have lost their insurance. Uh, if you don't qualify for Medicaid, you can buy or change coverage through the marketplace. As our state response continues through the pandemic, it's important to highlight the peace of mind having health insurance can bring to you and your loved ones. I'm joined today by Brian Gorman with Get Covered Illinois and Margaret Dunn with the Illinois Department of Healthcare and Family Services to explain the marketplace and assist residents in exploring their healthcare coverage options. So Brian, if you could start, that'd be great. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate the, the opportunity to, um, to, to share some information with your constituents. Um, as you mentioned, we are right smack dab towards the end of, of uh, open enrollment. Um, and obviously every year, we, this is kind of our Super Bowl where we prepare for this six week weary between November 1st and, and December 15th where Illinois residents can shop for and compare and ultimately enroll in a qualified healthcare plan. Um, you know, and that's important every year, but, but now more than ever with um, you know, the public health emergency and, and all the um, what's going on, it, it's, it's even more important. And, and so I'm here to, to um, share some information and I'm joined by um, my colleague, uh, Margaret Dunn from Healthcare and Family Services. Um, she's gonna talk about Medicaid and some of the benefits and opportunities um, that are there as well. So uh, if you give me a moment here, I will share my um, screen. Let me start. Beautiful. Okay, terrific. Everybody can see it just fine. Um, so health insurance coverage through the Affordable Care Act marketplace. Um, we want to talk about the key components of the Affordable Care Act, uh, the ACA. It's really hard to believe that it has been 10 years um, since the passage of the ACA. It feels uh, brand new every year because the one constant with this um, program is change and evolution and it's never been the same um, year twice. Um, there are some obviously some external pressures and, and changes within which some are good, not so good, but um, at the end of the day it's important that people really understand um, what the ACA is and, and the benefits that they are eligible for. Um, I'm going to talk specifically about Get Covered Illinois uh, Get Covered is, is the state's official health marketplace, uh, focusing mostly on outreach and education and enrollment around the private ACA health insurance marketplace. And, and as I mentioned, um, Margaret is here to talk about Medicaid uh, and their program and the application for benefits eligibility, which is the, their name for, for aid. Um, and then we're going to wrap up again with the idea of, of free enrollment assistance. It, we understand, even those of us that that have been involved um, for the more than 10 years working in, in the health reform space, that shopping for and thinking about health insurance is not intuitive, it's not easy. Um, and we want you to know that we have help for you. So you don't have to do this alone. This is why we're um, providing this information, but there is enrollment assistance free of charge to all Illinois residents, regardless of, of what program that you may be eligible for. So the key components of the Affordable Care Act, and again, there's there's two really, really important enrollment functions. There, there's a, there, obviously the ACA involves a number of different um, uh, protections and initiatives and reforms, uh, but the two ones that we're going to focus on today are the, the, the health insurance marketplace or Get Covered, which essentially is private insurance that you can purchase uh, through Get Covered Illinois, where you can shop for and compare it and figure out uh, what works best for you and your family. Um, but the key element there is when you shop with Get Covered that there is financial assistance on your premiums to help you pay for them. And I say we have that if you qualify. Uh, but last year, more than 80% of the nearly 300,000 enrollees in the marketplace did receive some sort of, of tax credit to, to help uh, pay for uh, their insurance premiums. And, and some actually received further reductions and caution reductions to help offset their co-pays and their co-insurance. So, um, you know, that's roughly about, about 280 to, to 315,000 people um, every year. 
but also another enormous uh, benefit of the passage of the ACA is Medicaid expansion. Um, when this passed in 2010, states were given the opportunity to provide coverage for childless adults that met a certain income threshold. Um, prior to the passage of the ACA, if you didn't have kids and, and you were under a certain income, um, you were really on your own. So uh, Illinois, very proud to say that uh, was one of the first states in the country to accept and embrace the idea of Medicaid expansion. And um, uh, it's a really important benefit. And, and Margaret's going to talk about some of the, the, the growth of that program and, and how important it is. So in addition to a place to get coverage, uh, there are some key consumer health protections. It, it, it really um, it can be called health insurance reform, where it, it really prescribes some rules of the road for people uh, offering health insurance and understanding what consumers may be protected against. Um, so one of the key things is, is that all plans sold both through the marketplace and get covered and Medicaid contain what we refer to as 10 essential health benefits. And we'll go into um, specific detail on, on what those are. But essentially um, is all the, the core elements that every single plan must have. And so it's maternal care, prescription drugs, hospitalizations, um, preventive care, all those things. And we'll go into, into great detail um, a little bit later, but also contains coverage for people with pre-existing conditions. And this is really, really important. And, and everybody kind of embraces and, and accepts this as the norm um, now, regardless of, of how you feel about the ACA. People believe that, that pre-existing conditions certainly should be covered, but that's not the case as it were prior to 2010. Um, insurance companies could deny you um, uh, the opportunity to enroll in health insurance because you may have had a condition and some of them would be serious and like, like diabetes and hypertension, um, um, but some of them may be even smaller. And, and those worst practices of insurance companies um, that were in the past are no longer allowed. So particularly when we have so many people affected by, by COVID, um, it's really important that people understand what an amazing um, protection this is for Illinois residents. And obviously, um, on the financial side, uh, the ACA eliminates what we call annual or lifetime dollar limits. So th there may have been a period of time where um, you're trying to use your health insurance um, and you had a very expensive procedure done. And, and it turns out that you, you had a, a dollar limit annual. You were only allowed um, to spend a certain amount of money um, on services and anything beyond that, you were on your own. Um, this essentially is, has changed and, and, and there are caps on out-of-pocket costs. So when you go into the year and you know okay, this is what my plan is, worst case scenario out of my family's annual budget, you know what that number is going to be. It's all transparent, it's going to be there. Again, all four of those really important consumer protections did not exist prior to the passage of the ACA. So um, while we feel you know, um, uh, like this is kind of how it always has been, it hasn't. It, it, these are really great things and, and, and we're always looking to, to improve these um, for consumers. So I talked about the 10 essential health benefits and you can see them all here. Um, they are numbered one through 10, but it's also important to, to realize that these are not numbered in, in, in terms of, of importance or significance. They, they are um, certainly variable on what your family and your individual circumstances are facing. Um, but every plan sold through Get Covered Illinois and on Medicaid must contain this coverage elements within their plan. So you can't have an insurance plan so to get covered, which will cover ambulatory and, and emergency room visits, but won't cover you um, to receive your prescription drugs. So all those things are there. Um, and the one thing that I do like to share and emphasize is number nine, um, given where we are um, in, in this public health emergency is that preventive wellness um, is covered free of charge. So we encourage everybody to enroll, to, to connect with your primary care physician, uh, get your vaccinations, those are free, um, and particularly uh, get a flu shot. And, and you know, as we go into December, um, with, with COVID so predominant, the, the, the idea of, of, of flu and COVID um, wreaking havoc on our healthcare system, I can't emphasize enough how important it is uh, for you to uh, get your flu shot, in addition to um, wearing a mask and uh, washing your hands and keeping your distance. This is my bit bit of unsolicited health advice, but um, very important. So what is Get Covered? Um, again, we talked about the consumer protections, but 
Um, many of you are wondering, okay, what do I need to do uh, to get covered and, and who can get them? Well, basically, if you live in the United States, um, if you are a US citizen or legally present, if you're not currently incarcerated and um, you do not have current insurance through your employer, through Medicare, Medicaid, or the, the, the Children's Health Insurance Program, um, you could be eligible to purchase health insurance through the marketplace. And, and I always say, you know, if you get coverage through your, your employer and it's um, ACA compliant, uh, meets minimum essential standards for, for what um, health insurance should be, you don't need to do anything. If you're over 65 and you're getting coverage through Medicare, you don't need to do anything. Um, if you're currently enrolled in the Medicaid program, um, you don't need to do anything. Um, but if you're currently uh, or, or without coverage and maybe you are enrolled currently in the marketplace, um, we encourage you to, to shop for and, and take advantage of this open enrollment period. So when, that's nice. And now we know the who and, and not, now we're talking about when. And it's, it's an open enrollment period is November 1st through December 15th. And, and these are really, really important. It's only six weeks. Um, these are for, for the opportunity for those people that meet the criteria to shop for, compare, and ultimately enroll in, in a qualified healthcare plan. And for these are plans that begin on, on January 1, 2021. Um, and the, the next question is, well, you know, like, what if I, I missed the window? Well, that essentially, you there's opportunities for you to enroll, but you have to have a qualifying life event. And we'll go into some details, but um, if you have certain life-changing events like losing your job, uh, birth of a child, it triggers what we call a special enrollment period. Um, and those are opportunities throughout the course of the year outside of the open enrollment period where you can enroll in a plan. Um, now you only have 60 days after this qualifying life event to enroll, but um, you can enroll in a period leading up to if you know um, that this event is going to be happening. So while well, you have 60 days to cover that gap, we're encouraging everybody to take advantage if you know it's coming um, to enroll because we don't want you to have a gap in coverage. So, you know, what are these special enrollment periods? Um, well, if you've lost your health insurance coverage and, and sadly, you know, where we are, um, there are significant numbers of people who've been separated from their jobs. Um, and may have lost their health insurance as a result of that separation, um, uh, that qualifies you for a, um, a, an SCP. And it's important to note, and, and this was, there's a question that came up in, in a recent presentation, um, that the, you know, losing your health coverage through job loss um, doesn't matter on whether that decision is yours or your employers, or you get laid off, or you get fired, or you're just looking uh, to migrate to a different industry that may not have employer-based coverage. Any separation of health coverage attached to your employment would trigger uh, uh, an SEP regardless of the circumstances around separation. Um, another element would be if you've lost your, your eligibility for Medicaid or CHIP, and that is a reflection of, of perhaps you've seen an, an increase in your um, monthly income. Um, there may be people who are, who are qualified for uh, Medicaid, but, but have seen uh, different employment in their employment, their, their uh, monthly income increases. Um, if that's the case, then that would trigger an SEP or qualifying life event. If you've moved from one zip code to another, um, that would trigger getting married or divorced um, or having a baby or adopting a child. So there's a whole list of things um, which would allow someone to purchase a plan outside that six week window. Um, but, you know, again, could, could go to Get Covered in Illinois if you have specific questions about your circumstances. For the rest of you, you have six days um, to enroll. So do not wait. So I talked a little bit about, and again, we're gonna be throwing a lot of information and, and no one's expected to, to take copious uh, shorthand notes and all of this stuff. Well, um, the, all this information can be uh, learned and get covered. Uh, but we want to highlight that there is free help for people that are wanting to talk to someone about what their health insurance options are and to figure out what you're eligible for. Uh, in the past, we would call this free in-person help, but obviously given um, uh, some of the guidance from um, public health officials, we're strongly discouraging in-person consultations about what you should do to enroll to keep you safe. So, um, but uh, we have a system set up where you're able to go to get covered, click on that free help button uh, at the top banner. It opens up a new window, which we call this our connector. You enter your zip code and the distance that you're looking uh, to find in-person qualified assistance in your area. And then even in Spanish or in English, you can determine 
um, you know, how you want to, to, to receive that assistance, that all is there. And then um, a window will pop up with available um, organizations or, or um, certified application counselors who can provide you the help that you need. Um, you can make an appointment, uh, you can do it over the phone, you can set up a time to, to do a Zoom. Um, really, really terrific. Um, it's, it's free for you, it's safe, and anybody that's listed on our connector is certified and trained to provide assistance both in marketplace and on Medicaid. So um, you're not alone. We, we understand how confusing purchasing health insurance could be, um, and it's a resource for you free of charge. So ultimately, when you come to determine whether or not you, you know, it's time to enroll, uh, the state of Illinois does partner with the federal government and healthcare.gov is that official platform where people will ultimately um, begin that enrollment process. That's a place where you can actually see what plans are offered in your area, um, what the benefits are, um, and also the place most importantly for 80% of us um, where you get the financial help. So um, you'll start your process to get covered, you get your help, and then when you click on enroll, um, and you're, if it's determined that you're marketplace eligible and not Medicaid, then you'll enroll at healthcare.gov. Um, so I talked a little bit about the, the tax credits and you know the, they're, they're known as a number of different things. The, de the tax credits essentially are refundable credits that help cover the cost of your monthly premium payments. Uh, sometimes they're called APTC, Advanced Premium Tax Credits or, or PTCs. Some folks call them subsidies or, or discounts. Um, the bottom line for you is that, that they are um, benefits that people can uh, depending on your household size and your, your income uh, are federal tax credits, which will offset the cost of your monthly premium payments. Um, and again, some, a family of four making roughly $98,000 a year will qualify at the top end of the sliding scale for those, those tax credits, where a family closer down to about 50,000 will see a, a larger. So depending on your household size, where you live, and, and how much income will determine what your subsidy is, um, but it's important to know that, that the only place that you are guaranteed to make sure that you receive those tax credits are, are purchasing through um, the marketplace and get covered. So a couple of slides ago, I, I showed you the, the healthcare.gov um, uh, image where, where, where people ultimately enroll if it's determined to be a marketplace. And I'm, I'm sure that people are wondering, well, what, how the heck am I supposed to understand um, whether I'm marketplace or, or I'm, I'm Medicaid eligible, all, all I know is that, you know, my family and I need coverage. Um, so we've developed a tool on our website. We call it our screener tool. Um, before you, we, you, you move to either one of these two websites, we ask you some basic questions about household size, where you live, uh, some other questions um, about your income. And based upon those very, very um, simple questions, it's not an application, it's just a screener, will determine whether or not you're more likely to be at the Abe system uh, to enroll in a Medicaid plan or ultimately go to Marketplace where you can start that process shopping uh, as well where you can get those tax credits. So what you're trying to do is develop tools for consumers. So all you need to know is that you need to get coverage, um, enter some basic information and, and we'll take it from there. So if you are in fact eligible for Medicaid, which is oh God, the, the same exact protections and coverage um, that other folks get, um, you know, you'll be Medicaid eligible. And with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Margaret, who's going to talk a little bit about the application for benefits eligibility and, and Medicaid program. Margaret, take it away. Thanks, Brian. So Abe, the application for benefits eligibility is Illinois multi-program online application. So through Abe, you can apply for medical programs, you can apply for food assistance and for cash assistance. And actually the Abe application was assisted through the ACA. It helped us update and uh, make a more streamlined process for customers who wanted to apply for benefits. So as I said, medical uh, programs, cash assistance and food assistance, medical programs, there are quite a few different medical programs in Illinois, and each program has different criteria for eligibility, both income criteria and um, monthly income are the basic uh, criteria that we look at for different benefits programs. 
And this front page of Abe actually also has a screening tool and has information on all the different programs. So it's a great place to go to to see which programs you might benefit and be able to apply for, especially right now with everybody's circumstances being in flux and being different right now than usual. Next screen. So as I said, the basic things that we look at is income eligibility, residency in Illinois, and citizenship. Not everybody that applies has to be a citizen. For adults, you do need to be a citizen of the US or a legal permanent resident for five years or a covered refugee status. The um, exception to that is pregnant women. We don't look at citizenship of pregnant women. We wanna make sure that women are getting all the prenatal care they need and keeping their babies healthy. We also don't look at citizenship for children. And we really, really wanna make sure that parents don't hesitate to apply for Medicaid for their children. We don't look at the citizenship of the parents when they're applying for their children. So that's not a worry or a concern for parents. Next screen. Here's the income qualifications for all of the different programs. And they're much higher than people realize. In fact, for children to be covered in Illinois, a family of four can make up to about $83,000 a year annually, and their children will still be able to be covered. The parents aren't covered at that income level, but the kids can be covered. And you know, parents may end up going to the marketplace and getting coverage for themselves while the children can be covered through Medicaid. That parents or ACA adult group, the income level for them is a little bit lower. It's about 18,000 annually for a single person. And this is that big expansion group, which is getting medical coverage for millions of adults that previously didn't have access to medical coverage. So that's part of the, one of the great things of the ACA. Pregnant women is the next group and the income level is a little bit higher there because again, we're wanting to make sure that pregnant women stay healthy and have healthy babies. So the level for a single woman would be about $36,000 annually. The AABD group, that's the last group and that has a lower income level. That group is also getting benefits from Medicare, generally speaking and may also be getting some cash assistance federally. So that's why the income is a little bit lower in that group. For the children's group at the higher income levels, there are premiums and co-pays. However, right now, because of the COVID crisis, there are no uh, premiums and no co-pays for that children's group. Next screen. That last group I was talking about, here's a little bit more information about that group. This covers seniors that are 65 and older, individuals who are blind, and individuals who have been determined disabled. So that's those people that have gone through the federal process of being determined disabled. They can earn up to 100% of the federal poverty level, and they can have no more than $2,000 of resources. Although again, right now we are not looking at resources. So if somebody has over 2000, that's not gonna be a barrier right now during the uh, current health crisis. You do have to be an Illinois resident, although you don't have to have lived here for a certain amount of time. And you don't, under some, some certain circumstances, you don't have to live in the state. Say for example, that you are getting uh, rehabilitative care out of the state or you are out of the state short term, you would still be able to benefit from the AABD program in Illinois. Next screen. This program is brand new, very fresh off the presses, Health Benefits for Immigrant Seniors Program. This, is, this was passed through House Bill 357 and this bill directed HFS to create this program and was passed and signed into the Illinois state budget in just June of this year. As I said, very new. And as a result, we are 
starting this program this month and about uh, halfway through the month, we'll start the program. However, individuals can apply, apply right now through ABE and they will go through the process of uh, being covered for that program. Illinois is the first state to provide coverage for low income seniors, regardless of their immigration status. And as I said, same application as the Medicaid application, abe.illinois.gov. You can also apply over the phone on paper, or you can go to the Community Navigators site and get assistance through that site. Next screen. And here we go again. We're just giving you some information. You can apply at www.abe.illinois.gov. You can call our Abe Customer Call Center. You can get an application assister, and they can assist you with any types of applications, whether it's the standard Medicaid application or um, pregnant women application. That's a great site to go to for assistance. You can also contact a community service agency, and there's uh, the website there, dhs.state.il.us, and get some assistance through that. 59 different languages are available. You can also use the paper application and there's a link to that here. And again, use the call center. Next screen. Here are the criteria that we look at for this new immigrant seniors program. You have to be 65 or older, resident of Illinois, and a legal permanent resident for less than five years or even an undocumented immigrant. And this includes individuals with the temporary protected status. Very similar income requirements to the AABD program. You're an individual with 2020 annual income at or below $12,756. That's about $1,063 a month. Again, same criteria as our AABD program. And again, the asset requirement would be $2,000 or lower. And for a couple, $3,000 or lower. But again, because of COVID, we are waiving that criteria. We are not looking at assets right now. So that would not be a barrier to getting coverage. Next screen. And here's the covered benefits. Again, very similar to all of our medical programs, similar to the AABD program. Right now, there's zero premiums and zero co-pays, doctor's visits, hospital visits, therapies, prescription drugs. One of the big differences is, though, that long-term care services are not covered under this program. And in the beginning, at least, while we're getting our feet under us, there will not be a managed care program for this benefit group. Next screen. And here's some Medicaid eligibility changes that we implemented during COVID. And this is to make coverage more accessible, easier for families so that they're not having any gaps in medical coverage, especially right now where we know that a lot more families are vulnerable to getting ill. We are allowing a self-attestation of information when electronic verifications aren't available. What that means is Generally, when people apply for Medicaid or any one of our medical programs, the system actually looks at electronic verification like the Secretary of State or the De Department of Employment Security to verify the information that the individual is telling us. Right now, because of COVID, we're allowing that attestation even if we can't verify that information initially. We're also allowing presumptive eligibility for adults. Generally, that's only for kids, but right now we're allowing that for adults. And what that means is during the period where a caseworker is looking at your case and determining whether or not you're available or whether you're eligible for coverage, you're gonna be covered. So that means whether or not you ultimately get approved during that period, whether it's one month, two months, three months, you'll be covered no matter what the ultimate determination is. We've waived cost sharing. So that means no premiums, no co-pays for those higher income all kids levels, for veterans care, and for the uh, workers with disabilities that we have medical coverage for. 
We're not doing any medical determinations right now. So again, we don't want people losing their coverage because they didn't turn in paperwork, which may be a little bit harder now with um, not all the offices open all of the time for the same amount of time as previously. We're not canceling any benefits unless people move out of state pass away or request uh, closure of benefits. We're also allowing certified application counselors to assist people over the phone and to get verbal consent to submit the application themselves. So as Brian said, this can be a confusing process and you don't have to do it alone. You can talk to a certified application counselor, give them your information and they can actually submit the application on your behalf. They'll just ask you some questions, ask you if you're giving permission for them to do this. They'll submit that along with the application. We've also expanded coverage to telehealth visits. Right now, a lot of doctors have gone to that as a safer alternative to in-person visits. We've also suspended some of the prior authorizations, um, certain medications. We're allowing three months worth of medications rather than one and some services like some at-home benefits, we have waived the um, prior authorization on those. Next screen. COVID testing and treatment is free for anybody with Medicare or Medicaid. We also have the emergency medical group for non-citizens in Illinois who do have or may have COVID and meet all the rest of the Medicaid eligibility rules. And of course, we've got that new senior immigrants program as well. If individuals are not eligible for Medicaid, Medicare, or that emergency medical group, don't worry, still go and get tested and get treatment. Hospitals are able to be reimbursed by the federal government. And again, we don't want anybody not going in because they're afraid they're gonna end up with a huge bill. Next screen. The Medicaid covered services are the same that Brian talked about for the healthcare marketplace, doctor's visits, immunizations, behavioral health, which is really important right now. We know we've got a higher incidence of depression. Also vision, hearing, and dental screenings, eyeglasses, hearing aids, prescription drugs. The one big difference is we also offer transportation. So again, to avoid that public transportation right now, you can actually get a pickup and a drop off to and from your doctor's office. Next screen. In Illinois, we do require managed care organizations, just like HMOs or PPOs. This is the type of medical group that you get coverage through and you choose a primary care provider. They offer all the same services one huge benefit is they can help individuals manage chronic health conditions, um, heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes. They can help you to manage your medications, your doctor's visits, all the different things that you need to manage those conditions. They can help you find a provider that's convenient for you. They can help transitions out of a hospital or a facility going to home, getting any home care you need, or helping finding a facility to transition out of from a hospital. And again, that care coordination and connecting you to community resources, mental health services, child care resources, or perhaps something like a food pantry. Next screen. And here's the MCOs that are available in Illinois. And you can see these are all well-respected national organizations, Aetna, Better Health, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Community Family Health Plans, Meridian, Molina, and then specifically just in Cook County, we also have County Care Health Plan for residents, strictly for residents of Cook County. Next screen. And I'm turning it back over to Brian now. Thank you, Margaret. Um, so again, there's a lot of information that we threw at you. Um, and the, the one thing we want everybody to kind of comfortably understand um, is that you don't have to know everything that you need to know. Um, what you need to do is go to getcoveredillinois.gov and know that 
um, there is the place where you can find assistance to walk you through what your options are. And so this takes the shape of a number of different things. We have what we call certified application counselors. These are people who are often connected with local providers and community-based organizations who are certified and trained by the Department of Insurance to provide enrollment support both for marketplace as well as Medicaid. And they can walk you through the different types of plans, uh, a lot of mm -hmm. questions, and can cater that to what your individual needs might be. Uh, you, by going to get cover, you type in your zip code, as I said before, figure out where it is, and then set up a, an appointment where you can talk either over the phone um, with consent um, or through Zoom to kind of walk you through your process. They may be referred as navigators, which essentially the same thing. They're individuals and organizations trained also by the insurance to walk you through what your options are. Um, but we also work very closely with Department of Human Services for those other benefits that Margaret touched on, as well as local community health departments, health centers, um, who are doing so much important work right now as we're um, working our way through this important um, public health crisis. And again, we work very closely um, uh, as, as state agencies, even though we, we oversee different programs, we work very closely together and, and, and you know, obviously the marketplace and, and where we are get covered we're closely with Margaret and uh, healthcare and family services because they manage Medicaid. Uh, they work very closely in eligibility for other programs like SNAP and, and uh, nutritional assistance programs, cash assistance, childcare. Um, and then obviously, you know, the Department of Insurance every day works with the APH um, who's got their hands full addressing the, the public health crisis. So um, all of us are working together, uh, coordinating the best we can to make sure that you, um, the Illinois consumer has the best available health options um, and obviously wraparound services uh, for you and, and your family. So um, here's a list of, of resources, um, phone numbers and, and websites that are most important. You know, I would shamelessly plug our own website there, getcoveredillinois.gov. All that information um, that you may need is there. Um, and uh, we have fact sheets and, and, and uh, enrollment assistance to start the process for enrollment, uh, wherever you need to go, um, that's that. So um, Senator, we, we really do appreciate the opportunity to, to um, share this information. We know it's a lot, um, but everybody just needs to know. I think the most important takeaway is um, if you don't currently have coverage um, and you need to shop for or you don't, um, you have until December 15th, which is just uh, six short days away. Obviously, Medicaid populations can enroll year round, but um, the, the, the best time to get covered is today. Um, so thank you for the opportunity. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate all the information. There are so many resources that the state is providing to folks that need help. Uh, they just need to reach out. They need to reach out to um, getcovered.illinois.gov. That's certainly a, a place to start. Um, I did have one question. Is the coverage for your kids and what age does it go to? Does it still go to age 26 uh, for coverage for your kids? Right. One of the, the, the benefits of the Affordable Care Act is, is that, that children up to the age of 26 can stay on, on their parents' um, health insurance. It's, it's pretty great, particularly um, given the, the, the changing um, domestic environments that, that all of us are, are encountering, and it's really nice to have. Um, but up to the age of 26, um, children are eligible to stay on their parents' um, health insurance. Once um, they age off, then they, they're going to need to either, you know, get Medicaid or, or marketplace or, you know, employer-based coverage. But it is a, a benefit for, for those of us that, um, that want to make sure that our kids are covered. Good, thanks. Um, I just want to thank you both, you know, Brian and Margaret for taking the time to do this. This virtual conversation is different, but uh, appropriate right now. I encourage the residents and constituents um, and all in Illinois residents to visit this getcovered.illinois.gov to explore all your family's options right now. So during a pandemic, health insurance coverage is uh, has never been more important. It's critical for everybody to get covered. They only have until the 15th. So I, I really encourage everybody to, to go out there and get the insurance because you've got to have it. So thanks everybody. I really appreciate the time that you put in. State has so many great resources. Just reach out and see what we can do to help you.